Hey guys, what's up? Misha here, and Matt as well, as you can see, uh, though I'm going to be doing most of the talking. He's here just for moral support, right? That's right. Um, but I'm a student today, I know, I know nothing about the topics. He knows so. nothing about the topics, and for uh, you guys out there who may not know about this, then hopefully this will be an educational lesson. So, we are going to be talking about parallel compression today. And that is uh, one of those buzzwords that seems to conjure up a lot of uh, debate and mystery with some groups of people. But I'm going to demystify it for you guys and uh, explain how I tend to use it with drums to uh, sort of get more punch and maybe some more sustain out of the drums without resorting to regular compression. Now, to start off... Um, with compression, if you were to compress your drum bus or something like that, you would have a lot of cymbals and you would have uh, a lot of pumping in the cymbals as well as those interacting with the kick, snare, and toms and rooms, etc. So basically, parallel compression is a way that you are routing out to certain pieces of the, of the kit to a compressor. So as you can see here... Um, so this is my mixer. Now, uh, for those of you who use Cubase, this might look familiar. For those of you who don't, uh, the plugins are all up here. I have everything here, uh, or all the drums routed to this drum bus right here. But I also have made a parallel compression bus here. And this is running a uh, FET compressor, a soft tube FET compressor, which I have absolutely dimed right now. You know, the input's all the way. Um, the, the ratio seems to be around 16. The attack and release are very fast. Um, I'm not using any of the high cut stuff, and it's set to full, uh, full compression there. Um, and I am feeding different parts of the kit to this compressor here, so and in different amounts. So I'm sending using a send, uh, like the overheads um, minus 16.2, as you can see. I mean, these are set by ear, really. Um, but different parts of the kit, you know, this overhead, this is room. Um, the uh, snare is going fairly heavily. That's that's at at zero there. Uh, the kick and the toms. Now I'm actually not sending comparatively as much overhead but I'm sending a little bit just for a little bit of glue so how does this sound well let me show you without it this is what this sounds like this is a uh, section of juggernaut that we recreated with uh, GGD so that sounds pretty good um, but I would argue that it doesn't have a lot of life. It doesn't have a lot of energy to it. And uh, things like the snare are, are, are getting a bit buried. You know, if you solo it, it sounds good. But under everything, it's kind of... The, the sustain is getting cut a bit short. Especially on parts where the guitars are actually playing over the snare. Now, this is where uh, parallel compression would come in. So let's, let's say I uh, start with the fader all the way down and I play this. So what you can hear what I'm doing. I, I obviously took it way too high there, uh, but I would set this by ear as well. And basically what it's doing is it's, adding a compressor that's sort of targeting certain pieces of the kit and compressing them very heavily so there's no pokey transients and it is adding some sustain to everything just by the nature of how it's set. Very fast attack, very fast release as well, um, and a super high ratio. So it's just crushing everything and giving it no dynamic range. And then with this slider, you can sort of mix in how much of that sound you want. So if the sound with it completely off is very controlled and clean and with it all the way up is noisy and chaotic, you can sort of use this as a slider to determine just how chaotic you'd like it to be or just how energetic you want it to be. So let's listen through and adjust this. <laughs> Without it, I'm putting it back in. 
So it's, you know, not a night and day difference, but it's the kind of thing that I, I think really makes a big difference in the context of a final mix and giving something energy. This is beyond just sort of having all the right frequencies in the right place. This is where you sort of work on the vibe of a mix or where it starts to have a bit of character. And um, that's personally how I like to use parallel compression. Now, one thing I'll say is that, uh, I mean, obviously this is an endorsement of the, the samples themselves, but they're very punchy and the room sound is very, very nice. So I can kind of get a lot of what I want without parallel compression, but it's a trick that I'll actually use to sort of beef up or punch up some drums that really are kind of lacking in that department. So you may notice a bit more of a uh, drastic difference depending on the samples that you're using. I'd say it's somewhat of a testament to these samples that the difference isn't that drastic with and without it, but it's something I definitely use quite a bit of in the mix. And if we take a look at the compressor here... <laughs> You can see there's quite a bit of gain reduction happening there. So this isn't something that you'd want to have too loud in the mix. And uh, there you can see me muting it and unmuting it. Uh, so you can hear the difference in sound. Anyways, I hope that that helped uh, teach you a little bit about not only parallel compression, but the application in which I like to use this. Obviously, this is the kind of thing that you can route any which way that you'd like, so you could parallel process any sort of channel to any other channel, I'm sure in whatever DAW that you use. I'm uh, most familiar with Cubase, so that's how... That's how I do everything here. And just to show you how this is routed, you know, essentially you make a group track or an effects track. Um, you put an effect on it. And then in the send on the respective track, you can actually just send it to whatever bus you want there. Um, and you can also, I'm sure with all other DAWs, you can do this as well, but you could select whether it's sending pre or post fader um, so that if, uh, if it's um, a post fader, um, then even if you have the fader down, it'll still be sending to the bus. Um, so you could ostensibly just hear just the parallel compression if you took all the faders down. Um, but anyways, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's just how it's used in Cubase. Uh, you can do this with pretty much every DAW, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I hope this was a useful lesson, and uh, thank you so much for watching, guys.